need to go. Good morning, Antioch. Hey, I see we it's just us this morning. Amen. Amen. Hey, glad to be back. No, I missed y'all last week, so uh, please know. Although I was sitting there watching, I was missing y'all. Amen. Today's lesson called Women Speak Out. Um, devotional reading is Joel 2, 28 through 32. And you should read that or should have read that because Peter going to be on Joel. And the background scripture is Luke chapter 2, 36 through 38. Then we move to Acts 1, 12 through 14. Chapter 2, 16 through 21. And then chapter 21 through 89. The printed passage is just about the same as the background scripture, except um, we don't have Acts 1, 12 through 14. Amen? Um, would anybody like to start us off with a brief word of prayer?
We start off, and there was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel. Just to let you know, Penuel meant face of God. Um, but it's, he says of the tribe of Asher, and you got to remember some things about those tribes back in one of the tribes that was caught up. It was one of those idol-worshiping tribes. So there's a lot of change that went on with this Anna, just to let you know. She had some change. She was converted into so, it tells you she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. And the text starts off telling us about Anna, the prophetess of prophets. And she had some misfortune, where she had her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow. NIV does not give the strength of this woman because she was a virgin when she was married. She was pure. The statement of prophetess here speaks to a holy woman because of her knowledge of the Lord. And we will see that her ways are explained in the second part of verse 37. But I don't want you to think when they say prophet and prophetess that it means they were foretelling the future all the time. The Bible tells us Anybody want to read 1 Corinthians 14 and 3? But the one who prophesies speaks to the speaks to the people in this area encouragement to come. They uplift us. People that speak of God uplift us. Anybody that has a conversation with you about God will uplift you, even if you aren't willing to accept it. You'll think about it. He is one of those conversations that you dwell on later on sometimes in your alone time. So when it states that she never left the temple, it meant that she never left her temple duties. Okay, she was faithful to the Lord in all her duties as a young woman, wife and widow. And when you look at this, you have to look at her passage, her journey, because she was married, lost her husband fast, didn't get bitter, didn't get angry, didn't say, I'm moving away from you, Lord, because you took mine from me. She said, I know who truly has me. So she stayed with whom she knew who truly had her. So as a young woman, as a wife, and a widow, she was devoted to God. She had suffered and aged and still did not get weary in doing good unto the Lord. That is a lot to say when church over 30 minutes right now is too much. But Real Housewives of Atlanta Marathon can be on all day and you still ain't got enough of it. So you might want to think of Anna, both men and women. Anna had to devote, she had devotion to the Lord and she had a close personal relationship with the Lord. She was always seeking it. She didn't leave her duties. She had lost and suffered and not become bitter, and as an elderly widow, elderly, not youthful, and I like how they put elderly in there because it means that she grew her in her age. So her spirit was getting stronger. She was strong in her walk, and she did not lose hope. You know, we lose hope when things ain't going our way. We quit the doubt. She didn't do that. She had a true zeal to share her love for Christ with others. That's where you get the prophetess part about. She was talking about the son. Her conversation was about the son. She was at the temple constantly. And there was a time range for the temple. And you can see some of it. Anybody want to read Acts chapter 2, 14 and 16? Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Uh -oh. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. See, and this leads us on into later, but you see right here, it's nine o'clock in the morning. She there. And then look at the other time. Anybody want to read Acts 3 and 1? One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At 
3 in the afternoon. Anna was truly a woman of prayer and worship. This is why she did not lose hope or become bitter because there was nobody that she served more faithfully than the Lord. See, Sister Carly, you read my stuff. <laughs> I ain't mad at you because it's the truth. She knew who to serve, so where was she going to be at? She was going to be doing the Lord's work. We, you know, Jesus at 12 told his parents, where did you think I'd be? Well, Anna, where do you think she's going to be? Doing the Lord's work. Verse 38 says, coming up then at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child. Uh-oh, see? See? She's doing her job. She spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She spoke of that child. Anna approaching anyone, just the kind of person you want, would always make me know that from how she is, that her conversation would be about God and Jesus. It wasn't going to be no fluff and stuff. It wasn't going to be no gossip. It was going to be about God and Jesus. And she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. This is what she did and who she was. <laughs> to take note, Jesus was at the temple three times from his birth to this time. When he was circumcised, when Mary was, that's like eight days, Mary was uh, purified at 40 days, and he was dedicated. They took her to dedicate. That was at 40 days. Yep. None of the priests recognized him. They don't know who he was. The religious people didn't know what she did. And that's how that's how close her relationship was. You got you got I told you she had a personal, she was involved, but you, you gotta think about what she did and, and how she spoke. Even Ephesians 4 and 29, where the Lord tells us about our talk. Anybody want to read that?
16 through 21, and I, I started this off with one verse, and then I put it all together, because Peter started preaching, and we started talking about that a little bit ago, but it said, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and this starts in the Peter sermon on the day of Pentecost, as stated earlier in the lesson, to show you in his time, but he is speaking here in regards to what they are hearing what they are seeing, what they are witnessing. And Peter starts to quote Joel chapter 2, and what is going on is the fulfillment of what Joel is saying. Now, Peter didn't practice this sermon. He didn't write it down. It was just a spirit-led sermon. So, he was just going down by what he was being filled with. And this is the fulfillment of that or what was predicted. This was a second part of Peter's argument to show that this was in accordance with the predictions prophecy in their own scriptures. If you remember a few weeks ago, we had Jesus go right to Isaiah and was reading about himself. Now, Peter said, I can go back to Joel and tell you about what's happening right now. And it's already been spoken. You're just now witnessing it. And this was about the Holy Spirit moving. The word and the Holy Spirit weren't in conflict here. The word was telling you what the Holy Spirit was going to be doing, and now the Holy Spirit was fulfilling that word. So they were working together. Anybody want to read? Because um, I want to make a few things clear first. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 through 31. And God has placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongue? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Even with all these things that are being done, this is still about the love this is about the love of God. The greater gift of all of these, none of these exceeded, is love. We don't have gifts and may not need them. You see, it tells you that in this scripture. You can't tell me the gift you got because you don't have it to say it's yours. The Holy Spirit gives it to you. That's why you pray and if you get it, you receive it. It ain't you walking around with it and it just pop out to you and here it is in your pocket. And you show can't sell it or give it away. So don't be fooled by false teachings. The greatest gift you can have, though, out of all of these, and, and you can see Paul telling you the differences and what's here and what's there. But he, he asked you, and he, he asked you almost sarcastically, are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Right now, this is about the Holy Spirit working in the love of the word that's going out, that has been put out. So the greatest gift right now is this love. And we all can have and need love. We may not have these other things. We all can have love. And we all need love. You may not need to speak in a tongue. You may not need to be an apostle. You may not need to be a prophet. But you need to so, verse 17, and it goes through all of it, says, in the last days, and pay attention to it's the last days. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be burned or will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You have to understand that Peter said, let's break away from the sermon, y'all. 
I, I know you, you don't think the study is going great, so let me take you to where I'm coming from and tell you why these things are happening. So Peter is taking them to Joel's scripture, and Joel was usually, he was preaching about judgment. <laughs> he was a dude you didn't want to hear from because it was, it was not in your favor. He, he normally was preaching about judgment. But at this time, he was speaking in regards to God's promise. This is God's promise that he, Peter is speaking on from Joel. All of these gifts that were being heard and seen were fulfilling what was said that the Holy Spirit would do. God's promise. That's what the Holy Spirit would do. God's gift, God's grace being extended. The Holy Spirit fulfilled the word, so the word and the Spirit work hand in hand. Here, look at how verse 17 starts off. In the last days. This part alone speaks to the life of the Messiah from his birth to his return to glory. Now, just a heads up. His return to glory was not his death. It was not his resurrection. He went in humility there. He was humble. When he comes back, when he's going to be that liar roaring, then you're going to see the true glory of God. See, he, he left humbly, but when he comes back, there will be everybody confessing, every tongue, every knee. All that's going to pop up. We're going to try to fight against him. We're going to lose. We're going to be mad. It ain't going to make a difference. You can go in the book of Revelations and it'll tell you about the war and everything, how the blood's going to be up to the bridle of the horse. But no, when he comes back, that is God's true glory day. So it speaks on that day, but at the time it was speaking of how things were going. Jesus left in humility and his return and true glory could be at any time. We don't know that part. Remember a few weeks ago we spoke about the kingdom being at hand. All he was saying was the kingdom is near. If your hand is right here, it's that close. It's right there. It's that close. It's near. Anybody want to read um, Matthew 4 and 17? It is that close. Don't think because it ain't happened yet, you ain't seen it yet, that it ain't close. It is close. And why would Peter and everyone else not think that it was happening then? Because of what was going on right there and there. Could you imagine seeing all these people preaching the word, speaking in tongues, healing, demons being cast out? If you go to the second chapter of Acts, you can see when this really starts moving. I'd be like, what's going on? Because it wasn't going on before that. Now, I see it all happening. Joel says something about it. Now I see it. Is it the time? Is it the end time? God said that his spirit will do work. His spirit will do work. And every time God's spirit does work, we receive some form of a blessing. See, God's work always leads to a benefit for us if we are doing what he tells us to do. It also states the spirit will be able to change our natural world, both in the heavens and below. Look at the sun and moon, darkness and blood. And this is all before the great day that you read about in verse 21. But you also got to remember it talks of some of these wars, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Man going to be doing some wrong things too. You're going to see some things. We have to understand, as stated earlier, that this prophesying is not in the form of future events where they speak to us prophesying with the kids. It talks of teaching the word, sharing the word. But they will share and teach the word. They have to. We do it now. So it's still happening. They will share the truth of God and the gospel will be what they mainly that will be their concentration on from repenting to redemption up to salvation. We know of seeing visions because this is the way that the Lord had contacted us throughout us throughout the Bible. 
visions as the burning bush and dreams as Peter himself had. There, there is no separation and servitude in verse 18 because all, all who know God should share God. All, not just men. Pastor and I have spoken many times about people who don't want women in the pulpit. God does. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't want them to be evangelists or speaking the word of God. God does. Yeah. If you don't believe me, read the Bible. It's right there. <laughs> so, so whatever man may want, if it go against God's word, we call that an antichrist. Let it be known that this word is to be spoken by all who know God. This verse speaks to the person of the lowest situations also, such as slaves, neither bond nor free, because we are all one in Christ. Anybody want to read Galatians 3, 26 through 29? So in Christ, you are all children of God through faith. Through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is all through faith. There is no separation if it's in your faith. If you believe in Christ, women, men, free, slave, Jew, Gentile, there is no difference. Your job is to do as the Lord commands. Uh-oh, what does he command? <laughs> Let's look at a few. Go out and make disciples and not, it's not a men's club only or a ladies' club only. Servants of God that understand my word, go prophesy, share, and teach my word. How do we know what to prophesy about and what to do? Man, can you believe he told us? <laughs> he told us. Anybody want to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20? of your 
your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. No commandment greater than these. And you don't get a pass and say, well, I love the Lord with all my heart, but I don't love my neighbor. You ain't fulfilling the commandment. Now, I want you to think that we did that one about four months back, and we stepped on some toes. You can't say, I love the Lord with all my heart, but I can't stand you. Did they go together. <laughs> you can't do one without the other. And if you love them enough, the Lord, and you love your neighbor enough, why wouldn't you share your first true love? That's what you do. You share the first true love. That way you show your love for your neighbor. And when God shows you his love, it is so easy to show somebody else You may not be the wealthiest, you may not have the best job, the best clothes, but you got the one and true God. That's all you need. And when you realize that, you can be like John the Baptist and not worry about the world and just put on your girl and eat your locusts and honey and keep it moving and keep talking about who God is and Jesus is coming and to repent and all the things that John was doing. Be that way. We have to understand we cannot skip loving our neighbor and say we love God. Because it won't work. There are a few other things that I don't want to overlook. Because this new covenant compared to the old covenant got some, some differences. And that's what you start seeing here now, too. Because the old covenant going, the new covenant is upon you. Some people were filled with the Spirit. In the Old Testament, that happened for a reason. Certain people received the Holy Spirit. Now, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, notice I said outpouring. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is for all and all that you, not me, because I'm going to have to do it for me. All that you have to do for you is call on the name of the Lord. started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandate, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship 
and on his way home, was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. So remember, he was a he was big dog. This is this is why his name gets mentioned here, and you gotta you gotta understand this. Philip gets mentioned here. One, he helped a eunuch, but he was a man of God. He was one of the seven legions. Remember that he had baptized the eunuch, and then the spirit of the Lord took him away. You don't get taken away <laughs> if you ain't friends with the Lord. In short, he was blessed, a blessed child of God. And as I said, he was one of the seven deacons who seems to have settled here after he had baptized the eunuch. So he was settling here. He was living here. Anybody want to read Acts 6 and 5? He's got to go back a little bit. This proposal pleased the whole group and chose Stephen man was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Herminas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. Look at, look at this. <laughs> Carla, I appreciate you announcing, pronouncing those words. <laughs> if, if you look at this, even when you read this passage here, Philip was special to be one of these seven. But, but look at the whole passage. It said, Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. These other men had to be that same kind of character because these were the deacons. And then it tells you about these other men, Philip and so on. But then it tells you that we even converted one of them. Nicholas from Antioch, a convert, the Lord changed his heart. A convert to Judaism. So, speaking of Philip is big. Go ahead, Pastor. You notice when he spoke of Philip in the scripture, it didn't say Philip the deacon. It no. said Philip the evangelist. The evangelist. And, and, and he was known for that in that area. Yes. Uh, uh, after he did the uh, baptism. And that's what's going to make this last part so beautiful. Because it says, he had four daughters who prophesied. If I was to say this any other way, I'd say, my daddy was an auto mechanic. I'm an auto mechanic. What did he do? Philip preached. He evangelized. Mm -hmm. What did his daughters do? The same thing. As I stated earlier, I believe that these women were teachers of God's word. And, and there was enough stuff for me to see to back this up. Because they could have told Paul about his troubles, but they didn't have that type of prophesying ability. Because remember, Paul came through there. Paul was on some ventures that they could have told him, but it wasn't their job. They didn't have that gift. That was the Holy Spirit that was going to talk to Paul. But the gift that they did have was the love of the Lord. It's like they did. And they spoke about God. See, I believe that they were and are mentioned to, one, show us to teach God to all of our children, as their father Philip did. We can teach you about worldly stuff. How come we can't teach you about the Lord? We, we tell our kids all the time, we want you to be this, we want you to be that. We want you to be a child of God before anything. So I believe they were mentioned there because of their, their faith in this situation. And the father was doing a job. And when I say father, I do not leave out the mother. We just used to say the father to come. And to know the word of God. They, they knew the word of God. And what did they do with the word of God? They shared it. It is for all to do. All of us to share the word of God. If you want to know more about the word, listen. How do you listen? Get somebody to share it with you. And then what do you do once you learn it? You go share it with somebody. Because you may be able to get that point across to that person that the person who shared it with you can get it across to. You all got a gift of learning the word and knowing the word. And that the Lord will use whatever vessel. Uh-oh, we, we got to remember these things because, you know, we, we get high and mighty as men. We in charge. We running things. But the Lord is in charge. Don't get this twisted. I don't want you to think when you come up there in all your garb and gold crosses and rings and shirts with crosses on them that you in 
charge. God will use any vessel that is willing to share his word and don't make him change you to do his word. Because he had to do that with Paul. He had to get Paul. Don't, don't be fooled. God picks that. That's his selection process. And whoever he calls on, boy, girl, man, woman, let him speak. That's his choice. We talked about preachers are called by the Lord. Deacons are called by the man. Oh, okay, okay. I'm disagreeing with you. <laughs> These four sisters were great examples in my eyes of their purity and devotion. They were unmarried daughters. Virgins too. Unmarried. Devotion to the Lord and learning from their father that kept them in the favor of the Lord. You know when you, your kids learn from you about God and they stay with it, they stay in God's favor. No matter what they're going through, they stay in God's favor. No matter what Anna was going through, she stayed in God's favor. So, as they learned from the Father and kept them in the favor of the Lord to be mentioned in this book, they had to be doing some great things. You don't just get put in the Bible for no reason. So women, and I was trying to understand the title because it said women speak out. Women speak out all the time because you are a child of God. We are the children of God. And all that know the Lord should speak out. Don't let anybody hinder you from speaking about God. Because the only thing that they are fighting is this world. Let God's word come from you. Be with him at all times. And guess what? He will be with you at all times. He will give you what to say. He will show you how to handle that situation. He will tell you what to pray. He will tell you what to talk about. But you only get to know him when you get into his work. Amen? Questions, comments? Just a comment on Anna. You could, we could have taught Woo. a whole lesson on her yes. alone. But when I was reading it, I was wondering, how did she get that way? And, and then and then it just hit me that the scripture tells us how she gets that way. In 37, she loved the house of God. Yes. It was, she was there. There. Night and day. And she was a woman of self-denial. She was at the house of God night and day. And she worshiped. She prayed. And she fasted. And she fasted. So we want the gift of prophecy, we got to do what Anna yep. did. And the way Revelation says it, we all might have the gift of prophecy because it says, Revelation 19 and 10 says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Speak Jesus and you Speak prophesy. Speak Jesus and you prophesy. It, she made me think of them old missionaries when I was little in Shiloh. And Brother Malachi definitely know what I'm talking about. Then when we would come to the church, Clean the church totally, cook a meal, clean the kitchen totally, then clean the church again so it would be ready for the next day. And they would do it in white. They, they, they wouldn't come in in their jeans or nothing like that. They would be in their white working, and they were dedicated to the church. We have to be dedicated to God like that. Anna was and is a beautiful example of staying with God. I got a struggle. I had a loss. I'm still with God. Where are you find me at? At his house. What am I doing? Praying and fasting. What am I doing? Speaking the word. What am I doing? Learning more about my Savior. What am I doing? Being faithful in his greatest two commandments. She was a beast. Uh, you know, the pastor is right. We could have went on about her because she had a whole lot to go into. But the title, Women Speak Out, it threw me, as I said, because everybody should speak out. Don't be shy about God, because trust me, there is going to come a day when you're going to say, God, don't be shy about me. And you sure don't want to be shy about you on that day. It, it, it threw me, too, the title.
entire, mm -hmm. because if you go back to, it, it didn't just start in the New Testament. Mm -mm. If you go back to the Old Testament, there's at least five prophets. Yes. yes. You know, so, so that there's a, a rich history of God speaking through women. Yes. And it just didn't start in the New Testament. No. You, you want to think about Esther. Yeah. Esther saved her people by listening to her uncle, who was a man of God, who was feeding his niece. He raises his daughter and he said, This is about God. Do this. And she did. Hey, women are the same vessels as men. I hope the world realizes that one day. A woman can get up there and talk about God and know the Lord and be with the Lord just as easily as a man. And don't step away from that. I know you got a lot of uh, uh, saints. Believe, don't be here. They ain't supposed to be here. If they know the word of God and they're sharing it, they're supposed to be exactly where they are, sharing it. And I'll back anyone to share the word of God. And it's like I'll back any man that will share the word of God. If you're sharing the true word of God, that's your gift, that's your prophecy. I and mean, that's the true prophecy. You can't tell me about nothing that's going to happen in the future. The Lord already took care of that. But you show sure can give me some information, some education. Joe can lead me further into his word because that's what we do. We share so people can get a better understanding. And that's what prophesying truly is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Comments, concerns. Tell you. 
definitely prayers out this week. We had another week of losses, a lot of losses. Um, so we definitely send out prayers and of comfort and blessing and hope. Um, I had a loss, my Aunt Betty and my family. Um, definitely sad me, kind of caught me off guard, but we know that God makes the right decisions. They may not be what we want, but they are his decisions and his will, and we have to accept that. Um, so, in all the losses that we suffered this week, please put God first. Remember the life and time that he gave you with these vessels that he had here, and love on those vessels. I ain't saying you ain't going to cry, because I done cried. I ain't going to say you ain't going to feel sadness. I felt it, and I still feel it. But I am going to tell you that the Lord we serve makes perfect decisions. And stay in your faith. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. Don't get bitter. Keep serving God. He'll handle it. Amen? Um, our kids go back to school this week, Sister Carla. Pray for our kids. Um, they're going back to school. It's going to be hard. Um, it was hard when I'm out of school, and it's going to be hard with them in school. Pray for our teachers and administrators who got to do some extra dedicated work on top of the dedicated, extra, not paid enough, hard, loving work that they give to our children. And sometimes we as parents forget how much that these people put into our kids for us. So please keep them in your prayers this week. Keep our children in your prayers. May all things go well in the sight of God for them. We just want them to increase and gain, and we want our administrators to have the strength to deal with them, because this is going to be a challenge. Amen? Amen. Anything else? Anybody want to pray this out? We give thee thanks, O oh Lord, for this another day. We thank you, O oh Lord.